Hi everyone, it's Debbie here from Property Apprentice and carrying on from last week's theme, I'm going to talk about what you can and can't do at COVID-19 alert levels 2 and 1 as we seem to be starting to come out of this latest lockdown across the country. All right, I'll start off with what real estate agents are restricted to at level 2 and um, this is in reference to the website, the REA website, Real Estate Authority website, so that's www.rea.govt.nz forward slash news forward slash COVID-19 for those of you that are just listening and not watching the video on YouTube. All right, so uh, there's lots more information on that link on that website, so feel free to go check it out or if you want to go back to that for future reference, okay, because understandably they'll be updating things from time to time as well. It does seem that we are in a bit of a moving, you know, a state of, of change, all right. So for real estate agents, they need to make sure that anyone who comes to an open home at level two, make sure that they scan their QR codes or at least record their contact details. It's really important for the real estate agents at level two um, to do that. Records have got to be kept for 60 days for contact tracing purposes. Okay. Now, if the property is tenanted, the tenant's approval needs to be obtained before any professional visits. Tenants should also not be at the property during an appraisal. So if the real estate agent goes to appraise the property prior to listing, the tenants shouldn't be at the property and they also shouldn't be at the property during any inspection from a prospective buyer or anyone, you know, any professionals as part of the due diligence process. So valuers, building inspectors, property managers doing rental appraisals, all those sort of things. Tenants shouldn't be at the property there. Now, if it's not possible for, for the tenants to vacate the property, then everyone who's attending that property as part of that process needs to make sure that they maintain at least that two metre social distancing. During open homes, there's a restriction on the number of people who are allowed. So no more than 50 people indoors at any one time. And you also have to maintain the two metre distance. Now that 50 people limit does not include real estate agents. So if there's one real estate agent, there's a maximum of 51 people that are allowed indoors. Obviously, that can be difficult for certain properties, you know, if the property is a bit smaller. So that's where that two metre distancing rule takes over in that situation. And it's the real estate agent's responsibility if there's parts of the property which are tight to maintain that two metre distancing, they might need to set up, you know, sort of in one door, out the other type situations to let people go through a, a set, you know, set track, so to speak. So, you know, follow the same path and maintain that distance. Now, if it's, if the property's going to auction, if the auction's an outdoor auction, then there's a limit of 100 people and two, dis two metre distancing rules still apply. Okay, so maximum number of people at, at not outdoor auction is 100. If the auction's indoors, it's a maximum of 50 people. All right, so carrying on with the real estate agent's restrictions, um, they will be encouraging visitors to sanitize their hands before they enter and after they leave a property. And visits are supposed to be contactless. So that means that they're not supposed to touch any surfaces. Uh, real estate agents should open up doors and cupboards and things like that, have them open to begin with so that people who are coming through to view the property don't have to touch those surfaces. Anything that does get touched should be sanitised by the real estate agent at the end of the view. Anyone over the age of 12 inside the property who's visiting the property should wear a face covering and make sure that they maintain that two metre distancing. If it's work colleagues, they have to maintain at least one metre distancing. So if there's more than one real estate agent in the property at any one time and they work in the same office, they're allowed to be within one metre of each other. But yeah, anyone else, there's a two metre distancing rule. Now, buyers at alert level three or four can't attend viewing at alert level two because it's outside of the area. So obviously level four, we're, we're locked in our houses, we can't get out, can't go and see anything. At alert level three, 
you can travel to view other properties that are also at alert level three as long as it's in your same region but you can't travel outside of your region at level three so you certainly can't travel outside of your region at level three to go to a property that's at level two or level one okay so it's a good idea for real estate agents who are listing properties that are at alert level two to take into account that we've still got a good chunk of the population that are in alert level four and hopefully will be at alert level three sooner rather than later and so some different options for real estate agents to consider could be virtual viewings or um, video walkthroughs for example you know have those um, have those systems available that they can when they're listing the property they can take videos and do those digital walkthroughs of the property as well just have those sort of viewing options available online for any prospective purchases so when it comes to buying and selling a property, there's another link that I found particularly useful, and that is settled.govt.nz forward slash buying dash and dash selling dash during dash COVID dash 19. Now, if you're, like I said before, if you're at a higher alert level than two, you can't travel to view the property. You should also make sure that you've got a clause in the sale and purchase agreement, regardless of what level you're in. If you're making an offer on a property that's at alert level two or one, uh, certainly alert level two, one's less important to have this, but if you're at alert level two, the property that you're looking at purchasing, when you make an offer, make sure you've got a clause in there that works out what to do if, if we end up with that particular area going into a higher alert level. You know, So if we take a backward step in this current situation with lockdowns. So make sure that you've got a clause in the sale and purchase agreement to sort out how you're going to complete due diligence or settlement. So it could be extensions, things like that. So just talk that through with your real estate agent and also your lawyer to make sure that you've got a, a clause in there to protect you in case that alert level increases to level three or four. Now, you are allowed to do pre-settlement inspections at alert level two, but you're not allowed to do that if you're traveling from a higher alert level, okay? So there's one exception to that rule, and that is if you're at alert level three and you're doing a permanent relocation to a property that's at alert level two or level one, then you are able to go and do the pre-settlement inspection, but you're not allowed to travel back again. So it has to be a permanent relocation. So you'd have to arrange for accommodation the night before settlement, for example, and travel down to that area and then stay the night ready for settlement the next day. Okay, property inspectors, valuers, engineers, tradies, all those people can visit properties at any time as long as they've got the consent of the property occupants. So that makes due diligence a lot easier at level two. But as I mentioned before, there is still the social distancing rule and they need to wear face masks. Okay, level one, it's business as usual. So no restrictions when it comes to real estate business at alert level one, uh, whether you're a buyer, a seller, a real estate agent, anything like that. So no doubt for a while, we'll still have hand sanitizers and things like that when we go and have a look at open homes. But at alert level one, there's no restrictions unless you're coming from a higher alert level. And then uh, with alert level two, that's fine if you're traveling to an alert level one area, but alert level three, you can't travel outside of your region. Okay, so hopefully that'll help answer some of the questions that we've certainly been getting as far as what you can do and what you can't do in different alert levels and those links that I've mentioned earlier, they'll be really helpful resource tools for you as well to go back and cross-check there. Thanks for listening.